what amazing film. Um, when we talked first in Cannes, um, you talked a lot about the process of collaboration. And I wonder if all three of you could speak to that and how perhaps that was a different process than is usually happens in movies. Well, the movie is basically the story of a collaboration being born uh, and um, <coughs> between the model and the painter. Um, and basically trying to re rewrite, reinterpret the, 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 the myth of the muse, the fact that we believe that there is no muse, that muse was uh, behind the idea of muse, that there's the idea of a silent, fetishicide woman, totally inspiring just because she's there. Um, and you know, that there's been women artists since uh, forever, but uh, most of the opportunity for women being in the workshop, well, being the model, but that didn't mean that they weren't one of the brain in the room and that they were co-creators um, of, of, of the arts. Um, and so we actually believe that. We tell that story and we also lived it on the set. And maybe you can complete. Um. Yes, on, on set and even at the audition, I had this sensation like Celine was really creating this environment of you know, kindness and collaboration, this horizontal gaze between all of us. And as an actor, we were not just object, we were a part of the, the, this creation. And to be part of this creation is to, to, to give us a space to express and to propose things, and so that was the, um, yeah. Could you very specifically talk, did you shoot this film in order? Not at all. Um, we actually shot the, all the exteriors first, so it is Brittany. Uh, we had eight days of shooting when we went through through all the storyline, and it actually helped us to set the sentimental level of the film because, you know, second day of shooting, they had to cry on the beach and say, your mother's coming back. It was like, who's your mother? I don't know. <laughs> but uh, they were really good. Uh, and then we, we went into this castle with, uh, not far from Paris, but you couldn't tell because we worked a lot. Um, and we spent basically, like, 30 days in this room. Um, and the hard part was that even in the castle, we didn't shoot in continuity, but I don't have that fantasy anyway, so, I'm, I'm, I mean, it shouldn't be like that. Cinema should be about the present, and it should be always be about local solutions, so it should, you, you don't care what, you, I mean, I don't see why it should be better to, actually, I think it would be more difficult to shoot it in, in the continuity, but the, the hard part was that there was the paintings, and that's so we had to create like 12 different canvas with different steps. Um, and because, you know, we were shooting that in continuity. So we were like, oh, we have to make the canvas to make the nose. We have to make the canvas so that you have the last touch on the dress. So that was a hard job because each painting is like 70 hours of work, I mean, to be completed. So uh, that was the, hard part, the hardest, the only hard part in that shooting in continuity is that you had to produce a whole exhibition that will be at the Met uh, in <laughs> for the release on December 6th. And did you have a particular paint, historic painter in mind? I mean, is this modeled on a particular painter? No. <clears throat> it is based on uh, something that I was totally ignorant of when I began my research. Um, I mean, I wanted to inspire myself uh, from a woman painter, and I actually discovered that there were hundreds of them who were really, really active at the time, had very flourishing careers, thanks to the fashion of portrait. With the rise of bourgeoisie, people wanted to have their own, to be somebody in a frame. And um, so I actually documented myself a lot about all these women and worked with a sociologist of the art who was a specialist of this period to actually invent one because we wanted to think about them all. And regarding the lightning, we didn't have any painting references. We went a lot 
to the Louvre with um, the DP, Claire Maton, but actually to think about how were we gonna film a, a painter at work, how we were gonna sh yeah, shoot that, and, and, and what were the paintings that we were going to make. But regarding the lightning, even though we were always thinking people are gonna say, oh, this is Vermeer, this is de Latour, but it's normal because we actually ask ourselves the question of the painter, and we found the solutions of, in cinema. Uh, I have a question for Adele. Is this the first period film you've ever done? Because you're, you're, you are such a, a modern woman. And so I wondered what, what work you did or if it felt like you were doing something that was different in that way. Uh, well, it's not the first period piece I, I did. But um, I never really, because I, I played in La Polonide, which is another period piece, French. Uh, well, I didn't really want to play uh, like in the way you are supposed to play uh, when it's a period piece, which means like it involves a lot of cliché from the representation of this specific period of time that is the 18th century. So I, I'd rather like, I mean, we took several, um, um, limit for uh, like uh, sorry for for my English now it's missing but uh, I uh, yes we we apply some rules that are uh, like like uh, that belongs to this uh, reconstitution thing and I would say like one of them is uh, not uh, like speaking very clearly a bit uh, slower for me because I'm speaking all the time and uh, less with my hands as well and well this kind of thing. But then it was not, for me, it was not about trying to portray the century, but more about, uh, sorry, I'm losing my word, actually. I'm, I'm totally losing my word, I'm sorry. Just, sorry. Sorry, <laughs> well, I'll make it. it, it it's clear. Um, the other thing that I wanted to ask the two actors uh, once you say to the painter that she is looking to, that you are both doing this reciprocal thing, everything in the film changes at that point, and your relationship to each other changes. And that looking that you do with each other on the screen and the time that's given to you to do that is extraordinary. And so, did you feel, I mean, when did you feel that you had began to really look? And did that change in the film? Well, to me, I just, uh, you, you ask about the continuity and I really, I really built my character as a journey between, uh, so being an object to being a subject. And so this is the turning point where there's this scene where I, like, we, I said like, uh, if you're looking at me, who I'm looking at, it's really a turning point. But from the beginning of the movie, I know I am looked at. That's, I think the, it's different for the character of Marianne, who is ignoring the fact that she's being looked at also, you know. So it's more, to me, it's a turning point in a direction that I become really a subject, but Marianne, like, notice at that point that she's also an object in my eyes, you know. So I think this, this is a turning point. <laughs> Definitely. Um, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's, this movie is all about gays, and at that turning scene, the, everything is like more like open, like bit, because we start to really create something together, not only this portrait, not only art, but also we start to create our story together, our collaboration, our love, and so the breath is more open, the eyes are more open, the, the, the mouth, the smile is more open, so um, I think then the acting was start, like even the dress was less tight, you know. Um. There are not many films about two women 
in love who are grown-up women. There are a lot of films now about girls coming of age and finding each other. But you can count on one hand, pretty much, um, the and ones I did four of them. Four of them. <laughs> <laughs> De nada. Yeah. So, um, did you feel that you were inventing the language for this film? <clears throat> well, it, making a film is always about inventing a language, I think. But um, yeah, this time I felt because I did coming of age stories and, and it's about the rise of desire and it's, about, it's not about discovering somebody, it's about discovering yourself. Um, and this time with grown up characters, it's a love that is expressed and lived and, and, and it's actually totally different because it's meeting the, the other. Um, and yes, it felt like a departure from a lot of things uh, in, and it feels like you have to it's not only inventing, it's, it's also you have, you, you kind of pay tribute to an imaginary that isn't represented, but still exists. I'm not inventing all this. Uh, it's experiences and a culture that are not mainstream or that get, tends to be experimental or avant-garde and that never becomes mainstream so far when it's made by women. Um, and so it should be about uh, yeah, paying attention to these imaginaries, saying they, are, they exist, they do exist, but also inventing, of course, because it's a film, so, and it's mine. So uh, it's, it's the way to have the, the whole package of contribution. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's English, but... Uh, and did you, I'm, I'm gonna open it up for questions. Okay, I have one more. I wanna do this one more. Um, at what point did you decide that the, you would not have music except for the singing on the beach and the Vivaldi? At the beginning of the process of thinking about the film. I mean, it's always a decision that I take very early in the process, whether there'll be music in the film or not, because it definitely influences the writing. Because if there's no music, then you have to find the rhythm that allows that allows it, and also you have to find the, the musically, the, the film has to be, you have to find the film's melody without with knowing that there won't be music. So you have to take this decision very early on because then you also in, you're, not, you're not gonna leave room, you're not, you know, I mean, it's really not the same. Um, and it was a matter of uh, um, reconstitution, actually. I wanted to put you in the same position as the character there, I mean, there's a frustration regarding beauty and the arts, you know, when she finds a book, it's like, okay, it's a book, I'm gonna read it 20 times. Uh, and they have, to, and have to, they have to go to church to listen to music. And, um, um, and so I wanted you to be equals with them. And so also that, so that you could feel that rush uh, and that joy when you finally uh, connect to music uh, with the character. Are there questions? Yeah, right down here. Yes. Uh, oh, is there a mic? Great. Hi. Uh, I'm from Mexico. My English is so-so. But I can feel a lot of density in the movie, like, obviously. And I can feel that it might have continued after the movie. Uh, do you have, like, what are your feelings after Filming, editing, all the process. What's what's been your own process and your process as an actress, as a director? I'm very interested. You mean after I didn't get? I didn't I'm not sure what your question is. Words? Like here. Sorry. Uh, that I feel that it's been very dense. This film. I would really like to know what was the process after finishing the movie, uh, in the editing part, uh, and after the first time you watch it completely, you as the actresses and you as the director, because I don't want to exaggerate, but it's one of my favorite films in life, really, and <laughs> really, really. And I, I'm sure everybody here has looked at a lot of films, me too, and it's not easy to say this, but really, <laughs> thanks. Thank you. 
<clears throat> well, we are proud, if that's your question. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's actually been, yeah, pretty intense all the way. And 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 I, I wanted to build a film that could be like a home and and, and a shelter, maybe also. Um, and. Uh, I've enjoyed a lot living in the film, and I think the editing process, for, in, for instance, was like really uh, simple, I must say. Um, and that's the thing with this film, that it's actually very dense, very, we hope, very new, um, but it feels quite simple, quite going straight forward, and, you know, just, um, and it's also really, uh, agreeable to live in a film because I've, I'm I just, I'm still living in this film. I have to step out of the room to let you guys in, but you know, when you're gone, I'm stepping back in there. Um, it's a movie with there where there's no uh, ancient old conflicts or old negotiation, and you know, it's it's a movie that's that it's built around equality within the characters, and I that that feels new because that that gives us the surprise. Everything can happen. And um, I, I think that's why it feels comfortable, even though it's painful to live that story. Someone else? Yeah. There is a hand in the, there's several hands in the middle if you want to go with Mike. Right dead center. We should answer as well? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, what Sen says is right. We are, it's a, some, there's something very s simple and very, for, for us, very warm. And I mean, for example, your comment or the way you feel about the movie really matters for us, for us, you know? It's like we did it with, um, like, because we felt that something was missing in the cinema history and this something was like uh, very important to women, like new representation of uh, women. And so we are very happy, is not enough to say, but very proud and, and very moved by the fact that uh, I think a part of the audience, which you belong to, uh, is, uh, can feel that it's, it's more than just, um, uh, I mean, <laughs> just a nice love story is also like something we missed for a long time and that we were longing for for a long time so i'm i'm, I'm happy to be a part of that well no. sorry if i answer did someone finally get a yeah. mic um could you speak about the final sequence in the film uh the close-up on adele can you go talk to closer to the okay sorry uh, could you speak about the final sequence in the film, uh, the close-up on Adele as she's listening to the orchestra, just the process of filming that, how many takes, and Adele, what w was going through your mind as you were sort of having to go through this long <laughs> expression of emotion? Well, um, <clears throat> this scene has been uh, the key scene uh, of the film since the beginning of writing. It was like I had that scene in mind. I wanted to make the film to make that scene. So it was like a compass. So obviously when the day comes, it's um, quite stressful. I think it's the most difficult scene that I ever did with, with me doing actually nothing because it's a lot of uh, machinery and focus guy is sweating and everything is on the shoulders of Adele. Um, but I trusted her with this. Um, Regarding the text, I, I think we did one because there's only there's one, but we did three if you want to know, <laughs> and this is the third one. Um, and we, uh, I'd given Adele like several steps of emotions she has to go through, but without timing whatsoever, and really like it was really like five, I don't know, like she remembers. She thinks about a lost love. She listens to the music and enjoys it. She, then she's sad. You know, really simple steps uh, that I and and I trusted her to embody them at the rhythm that she wanted. She just had two uh, constraints. That was to close her eyes at some point, and in the end, to have the breathing um, for the cut. Yes, it was written at the end of the script. The more. Uh, Living face ever. Uh, That's the last word of it, is, yeah. 
uh, last phase is the, la, yeah, la plus vivante, the more, the, the I don't know you say that. <laughs> The, the, the most, most alive, uh, yeah, the last phase would so be the most kind of alive. A challenge, mm -hmm. um, and to answer, I don't know, because it's just a matter of concentration and being able to, I think there's something very sportive in this kind of shot, because it's like you, it's like when the ski, uh, when the people slalom in ski, no? You just have to, to be aware of what's coming next, because after it's going to go so fast that you, you you will have to just focus on the on the curve, you know. So it's I am sorry for this metaphor, but this is how I this is how I think about this scene. It was more about uh, yeah jumping into something you don't really know where it's gonna lead you, but you just gotta you just have to do it. You, there's no there's no way you can miss it, you know. So so this is how I did it. Voilà. <laughs> Another, yeah, yeah, Here's hi. A hand right here in the Give mic on dead middle. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, something that really struck me was like the silence and kind of the quietness of it. And I wanted to know how, uh, in the writing process, that kind of developed and uh, if you knew exactly what it would look like when uh, you were writing. But you mean the sound? The silence, you said? Uh, the mm. scenes where there were like a lot of this gazing into each other's eyes and all of that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a process of making silence. The, the movie's more and more and more silence. Like after the, the, the bonfire scene, it's basically like there's no more birds or whatsoever. It's, it's, it's also about you. It's, it's about the room, it's about you, it's about you being focused and, and, and also silence and, and hearing the people around you being a crowd, um, especially when it's emotional. I really wanted a movie that you would watch like that. <laughs> <laughs> but creating silence in cinema is really difficult because, you know, it's not about putting nothing. You have to, you know, it's, this is, and now sound now, for 20 years now, 30 years now, sound is specialized, so, um, so you have to create silence by putting sound in it, which is quite difficult when it's a period piece because otherwise you use a lot of electri elec electric sound. You know, uh, if you don't, you, you can put planes, you can put, uh, you, you can put a lot of notes, you can put the fridge, mm, you can put the. I mean, David Lynch is. I'm always using David Lynch's sonotech because I don't like birds that much, so I'd, I'd rather use fridge or neons, and. Um, but with the period piece, y you don't have this kind of texture. So you have to find something else. Um, and uh, with a film that is by the seaside and with uh, chimneys, it's all about fire and, and the sea. And this is also kind of boring, you know. This could be like something that you don't even hear anymore because it's always there. So there was a lot of challenge regarding the sound editing, trying to find how to make silence that is um, filled with something that is not precise, but that you actually feel. Uh, and it has a lot to do with sub and the things that talks to your stomach. I don't know if I'm answering your question, actually. Um, and I, well, this, I talked about sound. We, we never talk about sound. We should talk about sound. <laughs> and there's a lot of off-screen sound. Um, I mean, sometimes the movie gets a lot of movement from listening to someone coming from far away in the house and yeah which is kind of amazing you don't hear that very often another hand out there yeah down here well wherever you got it but there are two people down in the first row that i'd like to give a chance to and of course i think we only have time for two more hello hi First, I would like to uh, congratulate everyone for making this beautiful movie. Uh, my question is for Celine, the director. Um, in the movie, Marion play, uh, paints a portrait of her muse. And do you think your work as the director, doing a lot of close-ups in the actresses, it is kind of the same process, you being painting a portrait of these ladies, 
And in the end, Marianne finds very difficult to say goodbye to her muse. Is it difficult for you to say goodbye to your muses as a filmmaker? And if you're gonna miss the process of having to make the movie? Um, well, the good thing is, we, no, we're not, they're not going to convent. Um, well, they might get married, but I'm okay with this, you know? Because, <laughs> uh, you know, we're, <laughs> we're not in love. Um, but, this is, but we love each other very much. Um, yeah, well, the movie is quite open to the fact that it's talking about, yeah, artists at work and cinema. That's why I pick painting, you know, because it, I, I feel it's close. Um, and also because usually you pick writing because you just have to, you know, there's somebody doing this and like, okay, he's a writer. Painting is more. Um, but um, I think, uh, I try to make films that talk about the future. Uh, I try to make a film with the dynamic of love that says love is, I love you is always something you say in the future, is always something that has a future. So I'm not being nostalgic at all. Uh, and I get to live a lot of uh, events and passion around the film with these guys. So, no, I'm, I feel actually lucky to have created something that gives us a future together. One more? Just one more? My mom isn't asking a question. I'm kind of troubled. Maybe she didn't like the film. Um, yeah. <laughs> what is, just shout it out. You don't have a mic. No. I, I do have my... Yeah, you. Yeah. The blonde woman. <laughs> yes. Uh, ça va? You uh, kind... Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. Who's... I think I'm the blonde woman. Oh. Um, <laughs> okay, we'll get you two. Okay, um, you kind of touched on it, but <laughs> obviously the film is about a painter, but music and writing also have a prominent role and I kind of just wanted to know how all of you viewed the, those different art forms functions and if they're sort of articulating the same thing or playing different parts. Well, as I said, it with, with painting and the fact that we get to ask ourselves the questions of the painter, that's cool with cinema, we also get to ask ourselves the question of composers, musicians, and the question of literature through writing or through ideas, like page 28 is like definitely an idea that you would find in a 19th century novel. Um, but uh, that's the beauty of this, is that we, we don't get to be good at everything, but we get to play with everything. And, um, but mostly we ask ourselves the questions of cinema. That's, that's, that's our answers anyway. It's, our answers are always about cinema. But th this is also a film about loving arts and how arts consoles us and how love, sentimental education is also an education to art. You know, every love story has uh, its uh, score or it's um, song, or it's books, or it's, and, and sometimes you will read a book that will make you think about the past love story that has nothing to do with the book, but it, it's this cir circling curation between love and art is also at the center of uh, the film. And that one more important question. <laughs> um, thank you for making time for my question. Can you hear me okay? Um, so I just, I was curious about whether or not there was a significance in the color, colors of the dresses, because you know in the film we see Marianne in the red dress, um, Eloise in the blue dress, and they don't change ever until the very end when they part ways. You notice that um, Marianne wears a navy dress, so I just wanted to know if there was a specific reason why you chose that. Well, I'm not at all into the symbolic of colors, and um, I uh, and I'm always asked this question. Though I guess I should have an answer, but it's I'm really not. I mean, I just pick the colors because I'm trying to to make something that I like and to have the, the contrast that I want. Also, the fact that they have one dress uh, is a way to design a character very strongly, and also to be true. You know, it's always like it's a fashion defile when it's a period piece and. You know, this woman, they don't have much money. This is like the small aristocracy of Brittany and, and felt right to have them have one dress. And 
it's also a way to build characters for me, that they have a uniform. Uh, this is my only suit, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> but I have it in 12, uh, so you know. Um, and, you know, in all my films, there's blue, for instance, and, and this time also, well, the, the, the walls are, are blue, and, and, and everybody's like, what's, what's the problem with blue? What do you have with blue? And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I know it's the favorite color of French people, but uh, I'm not cynical enough to, to put it out there because of that. Um, so, no, there's no hidden signification or symbolism in the colors. It's just about, you know, picking them and, and yeah, making an image that you, you, you like. Okay. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you for the thank film you. and thank you for this. Thank you.